Dennis says, can someone help me in SharePoint and PowerShell, please? We have a group, all employees in SharePoint. The group exists in every SharePoint site. It previously had the permission of contribute. I should change this to read, which worked fine with PowerShell. The background is that form now and only uh, people should edit files in SharePoint sites who are owner or member. All right, so changing um, this to read. Okay, got it. Now is the problem. I don't, uh, I didn't know before the difference uh, between member and owner and site member website owner. In our project sites, only member and owner are maintained. Now, when I set the all employees group to read, no member can edit files on the SharePoint site anymore. I think I need to change all people who are member to site member, or can I set the permission so that members can edit files? It has, uh, it all has to be done via PowerShell. Does anyone have any idea? Can I just say, <laughs> can I just say that Microsoft has thought long and hard about the naming conventions of these different pieces and how they then go and build their solutions. And when you start renaming these pieces, the standard default, not just adding new, new permission types, new, new types of users, but modifying the existing ones, you instantly enter the danger zone of change, yeah. of future changes, of pushouts and updates from Microsoft. It will cause you nightmares going forward by messing with the out of the box configurations yeah. for those things. So very good example of that. I just recently had a client that for some reason in modern created some subsites underneath their intranet and started putting their content. So we had the discussion about they need to be moved up to site collections, all that kind of stuff. They did. However, when they were part of the subsite structure, they renamed the default groups. Of course and, they did. And so when they migrated the site, the Microsoft 365 groups that are created naturally and everything, they were not able to tie to it. I was able to rename one of them back to the original name and the group associated to it. The owner's one did not work. They literally had to recreate a brand new site and then migrate the content over because one, I couldn't fix the permission level, could not connect it into the group. And two, I had no idea what that was gonna cause long-term within that environment. So I, they had to create a new one, never change the names. My other thing is, is why, why the option to create a group called all employees in SharePoint instead of using uh, all employees except external users that is built in and is more controllable? Why, Dennis? Why? <laughs> but yeah, you, again, it's, just, it's one of these things where, well, it's the way that we've done it in the past and we've had this and we, we've used this, the nomenclature is like, like, yeah, don't do it. Learn, ad adjust to this. Again, going and creating net new categories, new types of users within the system and, and with specialized permissions, in addition to the out of the box, that's how you can further refine. Don't go and re-architect all of, all of that. It's yeah. Just not yeah. good. And I don't think a lot of people understand that Teams is a collaboration tool, okay? Giving someone read access is not collaborative. That's just keeping them up to date. They can't be collaborative if they're reading, right? So which is why Microsoft made the choice. If you need to only read content, that's why it's done at the site level because the site level can be, you can have read there. But they don't also realize as read, as you have read access, if that site is a group site, which has planner and all that kind of stuff, they can't use any of those collaborative tools. They have no access. They will never have access unless they are a member or higher. And it's only just a read and that and they have to do that at the site, not into Teams. Yeah, it seems like they're trying to re-architect behind the scenes instead of setting it up and architecting it and using the tools the way that they're made. There's yeah. a lot of missing, um, as, as most questions, there's a lot of missing information in this question too. What version of SharePoint? What kind of group? When we're talking about members and owners, are you talking about an M365 group? dynamic or static? Are you a security group? Are you talking about um, a SharePoint group? Because there's all those different parts and pieces. In the modern architecture, the best way to do this, like Stacy said, is for 
read, use the everyone but external users group, which would replace your all company or all users group, whatever you've got in there. And then simply either use your M365 groups for owners and members and let that go in as the default or use your SharePoint groups for owners and members and then just add everyone for read for the site itself. Yeah. Um, but it sounds like they probably need somebody, and I put this in the notes, um, maybe hire a professional uh, to yeah. come in and do an assessment of your permission structuring, make a recommendation of how to re-architect it, and uh, this this probably is not best suited for a DIY project. So Yeah, and I, and I can guarantee with what he's got going on there, people are using sharing links because people can't get to things, so they've already broken the permissions anyway. Yep. By using the PowerShell, the PowerShell to change permissions is very, very specific. And if you don't have the correct one, you just broke permissions on things that you really didn't want to break permissions on. So I 100% agree you need to get a permissions matrix report, ran, see what the damage is and how to resolve the issues. I was going to ask the question for all of the consultants on this in this meeting. How often do you go in and do this kind of permissions cleanup for your clients? Quarterly. We do quarterly maintenance on a number of our clients and run the permission reports. Based off the permission reports, almost quarterly or new clients, we share the fact that people have broken permissions all over using the sharing links and we have disabled it in environments. Ours depends on what the client wants. So we typically do governance with every single client and some of them some of them want a report annually, some of them want a report every six months, Somebody, some of them want it quarterly, some of them want it monthly, some of them are overzealous and they go in there like all the time. Um, but I, it just depends. Like, so typically at the end of the day, this comes back to our governance topic of what what risk tolerance sure. do you have and how much time do you have to give to this? But you should have some regular governance meeting on some cadence. And one of those mm -hmm. steps should be to run a permissions report to understand, you know, who's got unique permissions, how, how many people have unique permissions and external permissions, and then decide how can we get those into groups and get rid of the unique the externals so that we can start over and keep those as a, at a minimum as much as possible. Yeah, and I would say at a minimum, quarterly. They want to do it, you know, that's minimum. They want to do it, you know, year. That's a bit much because within a quarter time, the it's amount of permissions get screwed up is a lot. Well, yeah, you know, I can say from an ISV standpoint, like we, we had so many of our clients uh, that were going and building these kinds of like daily, weekly, monthly auditing around permissions across different areas. Mm -hmm. We built it in standard out of our, in our, into our product. So the red core yep. governance do that. So it's, it is, I, I, cause that's my experience as well from the ISV perspective is that, uh, you know, when people have, are feeling pain and they realize that they have permissions issues that are out there it might be something that they lo are looking at daily as they're cleaning up fixing things and then it gets down to that whatever that governance cadence is yeah um, yeah so, so the so. number one the number one thing i hear when companies go through audits is as soon as a permission situation comes up that permissions is always the top level thing where people have permissions to things they're not supposed to have yep. and content has been shared um, so permissions is probably the biggest thing that companies get dinged on all the time and they need to be aware of it and make sure they're staying ahead of it. So, cause it can be a very expensive to fail an well, audit. <laughs> it's also so many, uh, you know, so many of the problems that people say I'm having issues, I can't get access or search isn't working the way that it should. It all comes down to permissions issues. So it's mm -hmm. the first place to go look at it. this user that's having the issue. Oh, wrong type of license, wrong type of permissions. Or, or whatever that is. It's that that's where you start troubleshooting is with permissions.